On Sunday, 27th of October 2019, a show and tell Vintage Technology Information Day was run in conjunction with Pictures in Motion Museum of Film and Television as part of the public program of the Picture Palaces of Perth exhibition on show at Wireless Hill Museum until Sunday, 24th of November 2019. The Information Day was held in close association with the VHF Amateur Radio Group, Pictures in Motion, Museum of Film and Television, the Vintage Wireless and Gramophone Club of WA and the Historical Telephone Society of WA. The public were invited to bring along their old radios, telephones, movie projectors, gramophones, movie or video cameras and amateur radio equipment to this event. The Pictures in Motion Museum of Film and Television is responsible for the promotion and preserving the history and artefacts of both film and television, as well as the social significance of cinema and broadcasting in our society. The members of the Vintage Wireless and Gramophone Club of WA are interested in the history, restoration, preservation and enjoyment of vintage wirelesses and gramophones. Although the main interest of members are wireless receivers, they are also interested in televisions, telephones, tape and wire recorders, music boxes, amplifiers, associated equipment and memorabilia. The VHF Amateur Radio Group of Experimenters build radios to operate on the higher radio frequencies and to study propagation. The group's members also inhabit the lower frequency bands. This group is the single largest license holder and operator of terrestrial very high frequency, ultra high frequency and super high frequency microwave beacons in Australia whose purpose is the investigation of the propagation of radio signals. The Historical Telecommunications Society of WA is a small but enthusiastic group of collectors of antique and vintage telephones and related memorabilia. Broadcasting veterans Trevor Kelly, John Quick, Rob Penno and Tim O'Day are seen here chilling out. Meanwhile, Keith Brotherford was busy setting up a display of film era cine cameras. Wheel, which rests on top of the spool and tells you how many feet are left. Oh really? Up here on these dials. That'd be handy. <laughs> Roy Mudge was assisting a visitor with a problematic 8mm film projector. So, what do you want to know? What I want to know is why it's not working. Well, oh. I, I tell you, it, it doesn't drive, right? This is the drive. This is the drive reel. Sounds like it's and lost it, its belt. Yeah, I think it's a belt. <laughs> Oh, it's an 8mm See there? GE. Oh, OK. I saw it. This is the uh, market up on the Yeah, I saw it there. OK. Yeah, it's an 8 It says AWA case with a Betty Fine chassis. Oh, okay. But it hasn't got the right chassis in it. Oh, no. Yeah. It was up in Melbourne Market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it there. And the guy said he got it from a shed out the back of Two Town. Yeah. But it's a battery be, shed, isn't it? It might yeah, be. Yeah, uh, I think it's got the. It, it might. Does it take six on? Three, two's on. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. You might be, um, um, have been like that since the 30s. So yeah. They might have just put the local one in there, made it all fit and work, yeah. and uh, used it out in the country because yeah. they yeah, two volts. Because battery radios were um, were quite versatile. We didn't have electricity, or well, they had 32 volt generators and that bit. Oh, okay. So they, they just had to get a set of batteries and and keep replenishing them. Oh, and they were made in Australia, so they. Uh, what do you reckon? Uh, uh, that's from the 1933, 34 radio. Could be as old as 32. Um, the actual battery phone might be a little bit later. Oh, uh, there's no sign of it, so it's, it's probably just as old. That's actually the AWA speaker, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a genuine speaker, but the uh, chassis... did not have a Perth... wasn't there a Perth address on this? Yeah, it's Perth, Perth made. It's oh, it's right, yeah, yeah. You, you probably couldn't... it's probably too expensive to repair the old one. Oh, I don't, you know, or something, or maybe they hadn't the surplus of cabinets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where were these made? The, the cabinet was made in Sydney, yeah. and the, um, the radio was made in Hay Street. Uh, they had it, um, the, uh, I think, across from the London um, court clock tower. They had, like, a building, and they operated in the upper floor, and they were just sold in the chassis. Richard Rennie is seen here with a display of vintage gramophones. Just checking the stylus to see if the sapphire stylus is showing any sign of wear. The four minutes got a bit of wear, but otherwise it's pretty good. It proved to be a rather warm day, and it was competing against Telethon for visitors. Tonight, Western Australians open their hearts and their wallets for WA's sickest children as Telethon hits a magical milestone and celebrates its biggest year ever. A better date and more effective promotion may have made the event much more popular.